Oh my goodness, this is such a great project and so enjoyable. Not even hard, very economical. I'm Marla and I love doing crafts. I love thrifting. I love thrift flips. I'm showing you here the rustic bells that I made the week before Thanksgiving, but I got the flu on Thanksgiving Day and did not get to share this how-to video with you until now. So I decided since it's past Christmas and Christmas is, uh, you know, probably one of the most prime times to show rustic bells. I mean, I love the idea of bells at Christmas, but since it's past Christmas now and we're going into the spring and summer, I thought let's do these a lighter shade so that we can use them starting now well into spring through the summer whenever you would want to use them and even they would still be lovely at Christmas. So I'm showing you that I have several shades of Waverly paint and some apple barrel acrylics and here's the secret ingredient. The Dollar Tree or Pop Shelf wherever you find inexpensive disposable wine glasses. I want you to look at the shape of these wine glasses. Now the bottom part we didn't need so I just set those aside maybe I'll come up with another craft for those I did use the elephant chalk paint to paint them inside and out you wouldn't have had to do the inside but you know that plastic glass is very glossy and if you don't paint the inside you're gonna see a glossy shine in there and I did not want that I wanted these to look um, more convincing as if they really could be metal so what we're doing is we're trying to make these look like metal and there are lots of different paint techniques to achieve uh, a galvanized metal look or bronzed metal or hammered you know um, use your imagination with this if you wanted to use some sheetrock spackle to give it some texture as if it had a more worn or lumpy or hammered effect you know it's plastic it's rigid you're not going to be able to make dents in this but you can make the look of dents using some of those things or sometimes you can just um, mix some baking soda into your paint which gives it a textured appearance so what i'm doing is just painting these simple bell shapes inside and out letting that dry completely and i am leaving one of those previously finished bells i've got that up, the, up there on the table with me just so that i can uh, get an idea of of what they looked like last time and maybe uh, get some idea for colors but this time i did not use them on those uh, original first set of bells I did but this time I thought let's do some green so I've got a couple of worn out craft paintbrushes that I can just spounce it on there with and then I've got these little spouncers that probably did come from either Dollar Tree or Walmart I, I like inexpensive craft supplies for things like this because then I don't have to feel bad if I just choose to throw them away afterward if they really get worn out or um, you know if they've done all the good they can do <laughs> in this one project so that's that's why I use some of the products that I do some of the tools that I do this color here is hazelnut and it is um, it's a chalk paint I've had a long time I assume they still make it I don't know Waverly from Walmart chalk paints is what these are and then that neutral is plaster chalk paint by Waverly and it is probably my favorite white or off-white shade because it's not too creamy it's not too yellow uh, not too white it's just about perfect for lots of things that are my vibe and if you have seen any video of mine at all you know that I love vintage things I love shabby chic I love old world uh, cottage core all those all those describe my style I'm a I'm an eccentric blend of all that but nothing modern I don't I just don't love it I don't know I was raised by antique collectors and um, it made me be an antique <laughs> from a young age I would say I'm an antique myself um, now I did do several different versions you know this first bell I'm just figuring out and that's the beauty of, of crafting figure out Figure out what you want to do as you go along. You know, um, there's no right or no wrong. Just do it till it looks like you like you like it. 
like you want it to, like you envision it. And if it doesn't look right, then you know you can always start all over. You can just take that elephant gray and paint straight over it and begin again. But normally I just keep adding things. I don't ever, I rarely take it back to the original paint. Um, now I'm using a coat of white wax, but on this set of colors it looked super yellow so after i got the white wax on there and it was really yellowy looking i came back with a wet paper towel and i just kind of you know sponged over it blobbed over it to remove most of that and um i thought it'll probably be good once it dries but when it would when it dried it still looked more yellow than i was imagining so i did go back and see and it even kind of turned dark so I did go back. Now, I did go back and use other colors. I'm, I'm, I'm watching myself do this craft. I'm getting distracted. Okay, the way that you make the details is just literally hot glue. It's just hot glue. Um, and I know it's not straight, and I know it's not perfect. But to me, that adds to the rustic, distressed look of it. Um, ideally, I think it would be better... And on that first set, I forgot that I did do the hot glue details before I did any painting. But... It didn't, the chalk paint did not cause my hot glue to not adhere. Now, to make a hole for the rope to go through, do you see what I'm doing? I'm using the tip of my hot glue gun, and I'm melting it first on one side, then on the other, and then I use the end of a paintbrush to uh, pop it all the way through because it kept stretching that plastic so that it was still kind of, uh, closed up in there but you are going to have to press your hot glue gun the point of it press it down and on about uh, one mississippi two mississippi three mississippi it's going to start actually melting and going through the plastic so i used a smaller hot glue gun the, on the first set and it made a little bit of a smaller hole um, because you know the glue gun nozzle was smaller but on this one, the larger hole, it still worked, but I can see how it's possible that you could get carried away and make the hole so big that it kind of ruins the whole top of your wine glass. Of your rustic bell. It's just a rustic bell. It's no longer a wine glass. It is now a, a fabulous rustic bell. Okay, so the color that I'm using now is a little folk art metallic gold that... I got from Walmart and I'm adding it and you know at this point I realize I'm realizing that I really do just want it to be a lot lighter than this so I'm going through all these stages and that's okay I left this part in so that you would understand and you would know that part of your creative process with anything that you do is to add layers and to just keep going. If it doesn't yet look like you wish it did, just keep going. Or, you know, or if it's making you ill and, and aggravated, just throw it away and go do something that's more fun. It's this is this life is short. Don't waste time on frustrating things. I've got a good friend who um, took a paint class with me one time and she she's a bookkeeper. And she is a very logical person and she did the paint class because she's my friend and we, she wanted to do something out of her box and for fun, but it frustrated her and she didn't love it. And uh, <laughs> it was a paint class where we were all painting the same thing together. And when she got to the end of it, she was exhausted. She said, oh my gosh, I thought I'd never get this done. Uh, Carrie, you know, who, you know who you are. I'm talking to you, girl. And I said, Carrie... You have so many talents in this world, and um, you do not have to be a painter or a crafter. That does not have to be in your wheelhouse. She is so brilliant. She actually tutored my daughter uh, in algebra and math because um, I was useless. I couldn't do it, and we had to have Carrie. <laughs> so, so, you know, we're all different. We all have our own strengths, and you need to do the things that you enjoy doing, or else why are we doing it? Just, you know, in our free time and in our uh, enjoyable time, we need to be doing the things that we want to do. I believe that the Lord intends for us to enjoy this life and to um, be glad in the days and in the hours that he does give us. And to me, personal time is a gift. I want to enjoy my personal time in such a way that I feel refreshed 
and I feel um, encouraged to go back to my other responsibilities and tasks. That's just what I feel like. That's, I think that we all need to be able to enjoy the life that God's given us. Now, here we go. I'm finally deciding that I'm going to just need to put on a good bit more of that plaster color to make them as light as I want. But all those layers underneath it are still peeping through and adding to the finished effect. So, you know, nothing's wasted. Nothing's ever wasted when you just keep going until it looks like you want it. Uh, um, I did this over several, several sessions. And so you'll notice... Uh, different different sleeves on me <laughs> because it, it was maybe over two and a half days or so so I, I of course I'm wearing different outfits and doing different things but I do my crafting on my dining room table because I have a huge dining room table it's in the middle of my house where all the activity is going on and it makes me feel like I'm still in my world and in my zone but I am also available to my family when they need me and they do seem to need me a lot okay have you noticed the way i'm putting this this plaster colored paint chalk paint on there i wanted it heavier at the rim and at the top and kind of fading into the middle zone i felt like the fading would look more natural um, as if what was touched and worn over time maybe over years of use would be maybe around the middle where they might have been touched more and then obviously the very edges of the bottom and the edges on that the seam and the rivets the fake rivets that's going to look like um you know it's going to have some stuff knocked off of it some distressing so after all the plaster coat has dried then I do go back a little bit more with that metallic folk art. It's just acrylic paint. It's not chalk. It's just acrylic. Um, and I do put just little touches. When you load your brush, um, if you need to go to a paper towel and remove some of what you've got your brush loaded with to give a more subtle effect so that just a little bit comes off. See me coming back now with over those rivets and the seams and around the edges especially and also just randomly over the entire bell I felt like it added it added to the look a great deal and I was glad uh, to see something that looked like it might have been a brass or copper also the the hints of that green that moss green color looked to me like the verdigris is that how you say it when copper turns the green oxidized color that also was a really interesting touch to me and I didn't use green at all on that first set that I did but this shows you how you can experiment with different colors and appreciate different aspects of the same idea yeah I'm putting a little around the top there too so sweet this was such an enjoyable project I really really loved doing it Now, the rope that I'm going to use, that'll be the next step. It came from Dollar Tree, and I think it may be called nautical rope. And it's a thicker, heavier rope. So I use a loop of that for the main rope to hang these on. And then I cut a short section of it and split it into mm, thinner strands, like two strands maybe it had eight strands total and I broke it down so that it was the same thing but thinner and as you can see the ends of these ropes here uh, have plastic so they won't fray but once I use them fraying is good to me because that looks like a genuine authentic used generationally used item you know, you could use the bells um, on a straight rope, like across a mantle or a window opening or, you know, any little spot like that. But I did loop these so that I could use these over a wreath or one of those, oh, what do you call the little twigs that are made 
for cinnamon brooms and that kind of thing. It would have also been very pretty arranged and attached to the top of one of those. And I have one somewhere. <laughs> I'll, I'll need to uh, locate it. It's I think it's with my spring items because it originally had some big plastic eggs on it. Maybe you remember it from a thrift haul. Oh, several months ago but I want to do one like that too now I'm putting the small strands through the holes at the top and then I'm tying them to my big rope and I did use just a little bit of hot glue to keep the bells in the position I wanted them to be on on the big rope because you know if you tie them super tightly they're going to just stick out awkwardly at an angle so the rope does need to have some looseness about it but i also wanted those bells to stay where they would fall pretty offset from one another kind of cascading down so that's why i did use just a dot of hot glue to make the skinny rope stick to the big loop rope that's what I'm doing here. You can see that. The inside of those bells really do show. That's why it's important to go ahead and put some chalk paint in there. You can see that I've used a grapevine wreath with, that's a garland that I wrapped around it. And I've been using that wreath and garland just like that for a while. And then the lavender behind is um, from Walmart. It's about a dollar, 99, 98 cents for a little piece. And there are two bunches of those. I can see where my hot glue uh, had a string on that particular bell, which this bell I took a lot of time with and I made sure that I I uh, swirled around the tip of my glue gun like I was dispensing a soft serve ice cream <laughs> so that those little strings wouldn't go, wouldn't show. And they'll turn different ways so that you can see the seam and the rivets uh, on some bells and not on others. But that's my front door and I feel like it's a very, very fresh look for approaching springtime. Thank you so much for watching and spending a few minutes with me. I guess you could put it on fast forwarding, get it done sooner, but I always enjoy my time just chatting with all of my friends and I appreciate so much all of you who have subscribed and comment. I love you all. <laughs>